There. I was wondering what that noise was. Aren't you precious? Um, you know, that looks awfully high. How did something so small like yourself get up so high? Maybe we should get you down if it doesn't look to say, oh, there's two of you. My apologies. Um, actually, uh, you two both look kind of familiar. Oh, I think I was just assigned your cases for evaluation. Well then, allow me to introduce myself. I am Dr. Shani. Oh, you don't have hands. Um, well, it's, it's a pleasure to meet you both. I I remember correctly, you two are quite friendly and hard to find, so I guess I should be considering myself lucky that I managed to run into you both. Let's just see here. If I can find your file, maybe I can just skip ahead to doing your evaluation. SCP-131 A and 131 B. Does that sound correct? I'll take those noises as a yes. Alright, let's just see what your file has to say about you both. Alright, it says that you both have been affectionately nicknamed the iPods. <laughs> Cute play on words and I'd say quite fitting. So a pair of teardrop shaped creatures with one large blue eye in the center. Okay. I can confirm this. It is a beautiful eye, I must say so myself. You are so cute. I could use this right now. I've had quite the exhausting day. I'm sure you understand. And frankly, I've been avoiding trying to see my next case study here. SCP-173. Oh. Oh, calm down. It's okay. Oh, you, you seem rather bothered. Don't worry. I would be safe, I promise. It's okay, and because you're both here now, I'll be taking a look at you instead for the time being, okay? Oh, there you go. It's okay. Alright. So it says here in your file that SCP-131A is the burnt orange color. And SCP-131B is the mustard yellow color. Okay. Does that sound right to you both? Good. Good, I'm glad. Alright. Now, it says at the base, there is a wheel-like protrusion. 
that allows for your locomotion. Do you mind if I just take a quick little peek? Oh, perfect. How oh, fascinating. Does that tickle? I'm sorry. Okay. I'll take a further look at that in a moment. Alright. And there doesn't appear to be any special safety procedures for you both, and you're free to travel about Site 19. As long as you don't attempt to enter any restricted areas or leave the facility. Okay. Okay. Well then, why don't we go ahead and get started on your introductory evaluation. Are you both understanding me okay? Alright. I'll take that as a yes. Um, I saw in your file earlier when I read over it briefly that you should be able to understand me, but maybe not so much the other way around. Okay. Starting audio log 001. This is Dr. Smith, and the date is June 2nd, 2021. The time is about 1600. I am starting the introductory evaluation and assessment with SCP-131 A and B. Okay. So, it says here on your file that casual contact with SCP-131-A and B is permitted, but it is not recommended that it should be kept to a minimum. This is to avoid the creature from forming a attachment to the personnel. Okay. I wonder why that is. You both see him. So harmless. <laughs> here. Hourly tabs are to be kept on subjects at all times. Duly noted. Set reminder to let personnel know that I have come in contact with 131 A and B as far as 1600 hours, so their location is Site 19 with me, Dr. Smith. Make sure I keep them updated on that, now that I'm in charge of your case. And let's see. Failure to account for your presence at these times constitutes a level one lockdown situation. It seems you both have been some trouble in the past. I hope that we'll be able to get along and there shouldn't be any issues. I thought so. Okay. Now, let's see, why don't we go ahead and start with a quick physical evaluation on you both. So, I have some gloves right here. If it's all right with the two of you, I would like to just do a quick physical assessment, just kind of feeling around and seeing your composition. 
muscle structure if you have it. Okay. Who would like to go first? All right. Starting the physical assessment with SCP-131A. is rather hard of their epidermis, almost like a, a metal, like material here. They, and um, it doesn't appear that 131 has any eyelid or anything that could be used to blink and moisten the eye here. Okay. It is truly fascinating. And there appears to be some kind of appendage at the top, which feels to be made out of the same material as the overall specimen. Um, not quite sure yet if this is an antenna or what the appendage is used for. For the audio log, that is something I would like to test in future assessments. Okay. Now, there doesn't appear to be any arms or any other appendages other than the wheel down here. Do you mind if I just I'll try to be more gentle, I just need to take a quick look. Alright, confirming that there is a wheel for mobility. And it does appear to move in omnidirection. So, they should be able to move all over, not just horizontal and vertical. Very good. Alright, uh, do you mind if I take a look at you? SCP-131-B. Okay. Starting the physical assessment on 131-B. Alright. Yours might be a bit more quick since you're very similar in structure to your sibling. Yep, so far, just confirming what I've learned about 131A a moment ago. Structure and composite seems to be the same as A. Same teardrop appendage. Okay. And missing island. Okay. And for the wheel here. Sorry, I don't mean to tickle. I'm just taking a quick peek at the wheel here. Okay, okay. I'm done. I'm done. Thank you for your cooperation. Right. Just going to take some quick notes for your file. I'll just be a moment. Now for the audio log, the wheel protrusion underneath 131 would suggest to me that these creatures are maybe biomechanical in origin. Also with the makeup of their epidermis. Now I see here on their chart that you both can move surprisingly fast. It says covering about 60 meters or 200 feet in a matter of seconds. Fascinating. We may not have time today, but 
That is something I would be uh, quite intrigued to see. Maybe we can set up an appointment soon and go over that. Good, good. Seems like that would be enjoyable to you both. Okay. Oh, however, they both lack a braking system which has led to some crazy, spectacular, and amusing events. Oh goodness. I'm so sorry to hear that. Has anyone here offered to get you a helmet or pads? Perhaps come up with some kind of braking system to help you both slow down? No? That's not good. Now that I'm in charge of your case, I assure you I'll make sure that you both are taken care of here, okay? I'll figure that out for you. Sound good? Okay. Set a reminder to look over getting a helmet, pads, or braking system installed for SCP-131 A and B. Okay. Now, Says here you're both good at climbing surfaces, which makes sense since you're both up so high. And for the audio log, I did see that their wheels had some kind of material that was making it easier for gripping and sticking to surfaces. Something to possibly take a sample of in the future. Oh, what's that? Now I understand. You both like to go up into the air vents. I was wondering why it was a little drafty in here. Could you both do me a favor and try to avoid the air vents? I would like to not lose you in them. Alright. Set one last reminder to have the janitors bolt the air vents down so I don't lose SCP-131 A and B. Okay. So, you both seem to be very curious. I would say you have the intelligence of a house cat or a cute small puppy. And it seems for the audio log that they communicate in a high-pitched babbling noise with each other and when excited. Now, I see here on their chart that no one has ever observed 131 A and B to blink. And as I mentioned, I did not see any form of eyelid or protection around the eyeball here, so I'm going to take a quick look with my light. You look interested in this. I'll show you what it does. It's a little light, see? You like that? Well, we can play a little game with it, but just hold still for me while I take a look at your pretty little iris and pupil here, okay? Okay. Let's see here. Good. Eye is dilating correctly when in response to the light. And there doesn't seem to be any Discomfort, okay. Noting that the membrane is kind of tacky with some kind of residue. Maybe this is what keeps the eye from drying out and keeping it moist. Since there's no eyelid or any like tears or saline. All right, all right. I'm gonna have you stare at this light and follow it with your eye, okay? Here we go. <laughs> Good. Good, 
glad you're doing good. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying this. <laughs> you found it, you found it. Okay. Very good. Alright. Alright, let's go ahead and do 131B. Thank you. Alright. Stare here at me, sweetie. I'm just going to take a look. Bye. Again, eyes dilating correctly. No signs of discomfort. Sticky residue or membrane on the eye. Okay. You want to play the game too? Follow the light with your eyes. Good. Good job. Good job. Green. You're doing great. Okay. Okay. Very good. Be sad. We can play with this again at another time, okay? Okay. Now, normally for the next exam, I would do some kind of peripheral testing, but since you only have one eye, I think that that's probably moot. So, we'll move on here. Let me just grab a different implement. Alright. If it's alright with you both, I would like to grab a quick sample of your membrane on your eye just to test for DNA, bacteria, what it's made out of, the composition. Okay? It shouldn't hurt. <laughs> Good, thank you. Alright. Going to grab a quick sample of the membrane around the eye of 131A and B. have these two cotton swabs here, and I'll use one on you, and the other one on you. Alright? I'll start with you. Hold still for me. I'm just gonna Sweeping it all over the eye so I make sure that I get a nice saturated sample. Okay. Good. Noting for the audio log that it didn't seem to irritate 131A when I was grabbing the sample. Alright. Your turn, B. Hold still for me, sweetie, and I'm just going to swipe all around that membrane there. I just want to make sure we get a thorough sample, and then I don't have to retake it and try to find you both again. Okay. Good. I wonder if there's a tracking system we can set up for you make it easier to locate you. Store the samples here one more. Right. Record noted that I should look into a means to add a tracker on 131A and B. That way I can locate them when needed. 
now that we've taken that sample, you two, they did provide me with a solution to spray on your eye to just make sure that taking the sample didn't cause any, you know, issues with irritation, possibly an infection or bacteria, and just to keep the eye moist. So, I'm just going to shake this up and spray it on your eye real fast. Your turn B. Okay. Good. See? It didn't hurt, did it? It's just meant to protect you both. <laughs> you both are so precious. I'm glad I ran into you today. I needed it. Frequency did not seem to bother. SCP-131 A and B. Okay. And lastly, for the test portion or exam, I have this heart rate monitor. I'm not sure if you both have a heart rate or, you know, heart or blood or if you even breathe, so something I would just like to test on you both real fast. Though I suppose you don't have a finger, I could probably place this on your antenna appendage. Do you mind? Okay. Let's start this and That'll take about 10 seconds, so we'll just wait here. And I'm going to add some stuff to your chart. One, two, three. Heart rate monitor returned results on 131A stating error. I'm going to run the test one more time on B. Alright, let me just try it on you real fast just to make sure that the results really are inconclusive. Okay? This one still hurts. Click this on and we will give it 10 seconds. I'm just going to keep my eyes on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here, 
Mm, error. Fascinating. Okay. Heart rate results came back inconclusive error as well for 131B. Perhaps we can take a sample or listen in at another later date. Okay. So. I'm just going to add that to your file here. And. I would lastly like to just confirm your height. It says here you both are. 30 centimeters or one foot. So, I have my tape measure right here. how big your eye is in the center of your body here and the width of your eye okay good and I just want to get the length and width of your teardrop appendage here okay. good and your wheel. Okay. Good. Alright. Oh no, I just needed the one. You both look like you're the same size. Oh, don't act sad. Okay. I'll take your measurements too. Come forward. Alright. And let's just get your height here. going to write your measurements down on the file. For the audio log, I will add them into the computer system after my introductory evaluations are complete today. Alright. So, it says here that you both typically bond to anyone who shows affection. Same as a puppy would. Oh, and you will follow anyone who you've bonded with. Hmm. Even into restricted areas? Oh, that could be some problems. Okay. I see why they limit people's communication with you. How sad. Maybe we can come up with some kind of It says you both can sense danger and will try to stop personnel from going into dangerous containments by swarming the feet. That's sweet that you guys look out for others. Alright. But, again, I can see why the bond or attachment with personnel is not recommended, as we don't want to hurt you guys or have you follow us anywhere where you wouldn't be safe. Alright. Okay, what is this? It says if subject is ignored by the bonded target, they will lose interest. Okay. Well, I feel like ignoring you both would be kind of hard, but that's something I can do if I need you to not follow me. Okay, SCP-131A and B. 
require no real care or maintenance. They don't eat, leave droppings, or sleep, which would lead me to believe the biomechanical origins as well. They usually only require visual stimulation. It explains why you liked the light earlier. Okay. It says here you both were discovered in a cornfield. Oh, but the date is redacted. Um, sometime in the 1900s. Yeah. Maybe that's something I could find on file somewhere else. Um, but you were quickly downgraded to a safe class. I see why. Oh. That's interesting. It says SCP-173 here. And that's who I'm seeing after this. It says that... You both bonded with a cleaner on staff, and they had to go clean out SCP-173's containment. You tried warning them, and then ended up rushing into the containment holding before they did and stared at 173 till they were finished. And since you don't blink, that worked for a safe atmosphere. Fascinating. For the audio log, perhaps uh, 131 A and B could be used to help with SCPs that require constant surveillance. Since they don't blink, they'll be able to stare at them while we're able to take specimen samples that we weren't able to before. Something to investigate. Okay. Well, that should complete my audio log for the day. Wrapping up audio log and the initial introductory evaluation with 131 A and B. This is Dr. Smith. As much as I had fun with you both today, I really do have to be off to see 173, unfortunately. Oh, don't worry, I'll be okay. I'm just going for a quick evaluation through the window. I wouldn't dare step in without anyone there to assist. Oh. Actually, if you both want to come with me. You do? No, but you look scared. I mean, you don't have to. Okay. Um, we won't do anything drastic. I'll keep an eye on you both. Alright, well. Let's get going then. This can be little secret.